I don't think this could be explained any better. Not paying your Netflix scheme will let you get kicked off of the Netflix system and streaming service. Failing to pay your British BBC license will let you in jail. Now welcome back guys to the channel and today we're going to be talking about the BBC and finally they're actually talking about it but I want to talk about it just now. So they finally announced on, I was watching the ITV and the BBC talking about the cuts they were wanting to do, they were thinking about the streaming service not being reliable enough or the, you know, the um, well, should we be still paying a license fee for it, or, you know, should we be doing a different way of doing about stuff? Well, that answer sure came out five fucking years ago, because we, everyone in the UK knows it's a fucking shit show, don't we guys, and Kleins, and we Bellins. Now, for the first thing, for anyone who gets a new house, it's not if the when the first lend comes out, it's when I have to pay my fucking TV license. And it's like £150 to pay for the TV license alone. And upon that, they're going to be lazy in April. Now the thing is, nobody wants to pay the TV license. And they even actually said, the, I think someone said on the TV, what was it, one of the press secretary wifeys? And she said, it, BBC might end up as blockbusters. And even, you know, this was from the ITV one, from that comment there, and the BBC one. They were never going to talk about what the hell was going to happen. Because we all know what happens if you don't pay the BBC, right? You end up in fucking jail. Why can we not get anything by Netflix, where it has good quality shows? I literally just binge watch Love, Sex and Robots. I think that's what it's called. And it was amazing good quality shows on there way better when you know netflix was first announced wow that was a disaster before they actually got all these movies coming out but we that's not the problem of the bbc is it people we know exactly what the problem is with bbc and this couldn't have been more exploited than when brexit came around now as boris johnson is slamming hard down on the bbc's bias uh, you know opinions and there has been so many occasions where the BBC has been politically aligned against Brexit well check what happened on Brexit day itself it created a horrible history program episode that was you know children based programming which basically shot on everything that was British they didn't even mention it was British they had that bloody fucking comedian which isn't even a Brexiteer, Nish Kumar, a very unfunny comedian, to go and tell us how great Europe was, and not even mention... Hello, I'm Nish Kumar. So, here we are on the verge of Brexit. The UK is leaving the European Union. You might not have heard much about it because things have been so quick and smooth. I mean, if anything, it's going too well. But I thought, as we stand on the verge of this historic moment, we'd look back at what Europe has done for us anyway. Horrible history. You see now, where's my British butler with my British cup of tea? Tea is not from Britain, man, from India it was brought. Yes, for your cup a thousands died and many wars were fought. British things, oh British things, afraid there's hardly any. The BBC press during the Brexit Day celebration said there was only a hundred people there. I don't think there was just a hundred people there celebrating it's like Westminster. Wish I was one of them, but I was in the pub instead. But the thing is, there's so much bias. There was even things the BBC even came out with saying Oh, we support the EU, but the thing is, you're wrong and you're racist and you're bad, basically. But there was like so many incident incidences where the BBC would take on a journalist, an expert, but they wouldn't be on a two-point basis. Take the show Question Time for an example. Um, what happened there was more ninety percent of the time. Which was actually proven, I was like, I think it actually was said in the show, 70% of the chance 
or 70-80% of the chance the show would take on a Remainer on the show and there would be like a 30% chance of an actual Brexiteer coming onto the show. And as soon as I got exploited by an older gentleman, nobody w that was behind the BBC was happy about that. Were they? The main concern with people who are paying subscriptions to the services, and you could mention this into a bar and everyone's like, shut the fuck up. What, you know why? Because we are paying the, for stuff that we don't fucking like. Like the incidents we are having now with Doctor Who. Doctor Who is now a complete woke mess. Like the drinker has probably recommended enough, which I'll show here. <laughs> Fun though it was being forcefully re-educated on such diverse topics as white men being racist. White men destroying the environment. White men being women for some reason. White men brutally dividing ethnic communities. White men being deadbeat dads. And of course, white men burning women alive because they're secretly gay. Who wants to watch that? You know, the BBC has been made so much shows, so much movies underneath its bland, it's actually been so woke, nobody fucking likes it anymore. And they're actually, the BBC is so out of the le left and right wing field, you don't actually know where they stand. I don't even think in the spectrum of left and right and far right and far left, I don't even know where the BBC even stands. And I bet a lot of people don't either. And this is why they're damn fiat. This is why they're so scared. Because they're like, if they ever go to a subscription service, you know, they're the only ones that think it's okay to criminalize someone for not paying for the TV license. Why does somebody not get that for a subscription service? They don't get that because it's stupid. Because it's all. It doesn't work in the way that it does now. It's pathetic. Honestly, it is. You see the amount of people that's trying to defend the BBC for this? Yeah, they can make good shows. But the thing is, when they make good shows, they point out the fucking blunder. Because if you don't know, for the last seven or eight years, it's probably seven from this date, the seven years, the BBC has been trying its best to incorporate other genders and other ethnicities to the show. So as in, let's say, a show that came out ten years ago, let's just randomly say random show, there was white people in the show. Yes, Minister. Let's have Yes, Minister. That's pretty political connection. That's even before 10 years. You know, the idea was the fact that people, there was too much white audience and there was too much males and females. Too much of them. So now the entire agenda of Doctor Who and other shows, and the only thing they can recommend themselves for is Fleabag. Really? That wasn't even that decently good. So the plan for the BBC is to actually make things more diverse and more gender. So that means instead of having, um, you know, a story about cops and robbers or, you know, a murder going to happen, let's go enforce in the fact there's two gay people in the fucking story because we really care about gay folk all of a sudden. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to say we don't, but you, you get what I'm saying. Don't force it in our faces. They like say, oh, you're doing this because you're racist. Why? It's it's stupid. It's like you're forcing diversity into our faces and none of us wants to pay for it. Because people would rather have a system where they would love to pay for it. But the thing is, the BBC has to die. They are already having massive cuts. 40... 400,000 jobs have been lost already due to this. And there's even some people who had to cut down their wages because it wasn't gender and woke enough. How fucking amazing. And the thing is, the media bias is not just at the BBC, it's everywhere. It's crazy how the media bias is so against it. And for the BBC especially, because I don't know if anyone knows this, but funny enough, the BBC as a whole is more or less 90 per well, it's all, okay. It's 98% anti-Brexit, 
well, Brexit didn't happen, and it should be more of a conservative thing, but the thing is, the Tories went for Brexit, right? You know, they're now for the idea of Labour, because that follows more of their manifesto of wokeness and so on. So now, then you have, well, that's the end for that, Ian. And funny enough, for BBC Scotland, the separate version of the BBC, which somehow we got privilege of having, um, is more pro-independence. Funny that, isn't it? Because every time they mention the subject of independence in Scotland, the radio, the BBC radio, the BBC um, TV show, the, the I even own Scotland's independent Scottish channel, that is independently biased in itself, because there was a new channel Scot uh, BBC Scotland did, because there was a thing of STV, the Scottish television, which is funded not under the BBC, it's funded by its own ways, meaning such as all the other channels are. Um, when they decided to make their own channel, they've got their own funding for that, but when they decided to make their official main channel, or second channel, that failed within a month. Failed within at least three months and the, show, the channel had to be cut off the air. But as soon as the BBC did it, here's all the lake of money you got from the taxpayers. And that is still existed for a good year. And funny enough, every single one of the programmes that's been made, every single one of the BBC broadcaster things have been anti-British, anti, um, you know, anti-unionist, because if you notice, sometimes when there was protests happening, they will glorify a march that will happen in Inverness, Glasgow, or Edinburgh. But when they realise there's a massive British unionist protest in, say, Murray or Aberdeen, that, or in Tory held area, they don't even go near to report it. Crazy, that, isn't it? So that just shows how out of field this whole BBC establishment is. I w but I wouldn't say just the BBC. I would blame all media outlets for it. Because the BBC is the worst. And if you want to point out any of the collusions, you'll be like, Oh, you, you just don't understand how TV works. Well, you should watch a channel called We've Got a Problem. He's even got a Shit Weasel of the Week, I believe he's called, and that's fucking hilarious sometimes. Because he just reports out on every stupid fucking thing the BBC says. And I don't blame him for it, and he's actually the reason I got inspiration to do this channel. So thank him for that. <laughs>going on guys welcome to the video we are going to take a look at a couple of clips from last night's bbc question time show in leave support in hull the panel as usual featured a majority of ramonas with only two brexiteers in the form of brexit party chairman richard tice and conservative party chairman james cleverly who with the help of the audience defended the democratic decision this country made against ardent ramonas annalisa dodds from the labor party Ed Davey from the Liberal Democrats, and the SNP shit weasel Ian Blackford, who actually wound his neck in during this show, which I am thankful for. Listening to him is like shaving your balls with a blunt razor. So, thankfully, you guys won't have to hear him in this one. It and it's also very noticeable, we have Brexiteers, which if you watch my so long 10 minute weird kind of video for Brexit Day, um, I pointed out a few names, and funny enough, those few names are only just a few names. There are people like me who have, like, no subscribers, but might get views. But, guys, you know why? Because the YouTuber is more reliable than the media broadcaster. And funny enough, I don't get paid jack shit for this. I don't get paid the same as a journalist. I have a risk of losing my job because of my outlets and my views, but that's the whole reason we do any of our jobs, is it not, people? Because we risk ourselves in the way of how things work. I'm not going to explain how that works. That's too much of a black pill. So, what do, what is the best way to come out of this? 
the BBC is going to fight their way through this, but the thing is, there is so much corruption. The the independent creator on YouTube is more reliable than the BBC broadcaster, the STV, the Sky News broadcaster, because they, honestly, the BBC doesn't even tell you the full story. The only thing they're so concerned about new is the coronavirus, because they can't think of what to do the next for 20 minutes. They're like, oh, here's a story, here's a story, here's a story. Coronavirus, done. That's everyone sold, because that's all we can think of. They're pathetic, honestly. And if this BBC establishment falls, good riddance. Or make something better of it when it comes out in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. And make sure everyone hears the message, because we are not done with the BBC yet. We're not done with these politicians. We're still draining the swab. So thank you and have a good day.